This video is about the royalties generated by online streaming services, and it's a really complicated topic. Sharky Liguana, a musician, writer, and entrepreneur, wrote a series of Medium posts, which I'm using as a basis for everything that I'm about to say. His writing simplifies and illuminates this complex subject. I'm gonna be simplifying it even further. There's lots of data to back it all up, though, so click the links in the description and be sure to follow Sharky on Twitter. Okay, so the question at the heart of all of this, is there a way to make streaming services more fair to musicians. Let's get into it. Spotify makes the vast majority of its money from the over 10 million people that send them $10 a month to listen ad free. But here's the thing, when you pay that $10 a month, almost none of it goes to the actual artists that you listen to. Lately on Spotify, I've been listening to this artist, Eif Barzilay, who strangely enough, I discovered through a yogurt commercial. Anyway, I'd love it if a huge chunk of my recent subscription fees went straight to him. I'm a huge fan. Unfortunately though, that's just not how it works. What Spotify does is they put all my subscription money and yours and everyone else's into a big pool. They take a 30% cut and then they earmark the rest for royalties. How is the rest divvied up? This bag of royalties is divided by the total number of streams across the entire service in a given period, and this gets us a number called the per stream royalty rate. Multiply my number of streams in a month by this per stream royalty rate, and you have the amount I'm paying out to artists. The big pool system has a bunch of problems, but I'm gonna focus on my perspective as both a fan and a musician. Not only does this method of royalty distribution mean that I have absolutely no control over who gets a piece of my hard earned $10 subscription fee, but it also means that a typical listener like me who streams around 300 tracks a month ends up subsidizing a heavy listener who could be streaming a thousand or more tracks a month. I end up paying for what somebody else is listening to. Let's see how this works. Out of my $10 subscription fee, $3 goes to Spotify, and that leaves seven to go to royalties. Let's say I listen to 200 tracks this month. Based on the per stream royalty rate, that means I've generated a cool $1.40 to be paid out to artists. But wait, seven of my original 10 was earmarked for royalties, right? I generated $1.40 with my 200 stream tracks, so that leaves $5.60 hanging in the balance. Where does that money go? It goes to subsidize a heavy listener who's streaming, say, 1,800 tracks that month. They pay the same $10 subscription fee as everyone else, but they've generated $12.60 in royalties, which leaves them $5.60 short. Oh look, I have $5.60 left over. Boom, I just paid for someone else to listen to Nickelback. I wanted my money to go to a semi-obscure indie artist who I'm currently obsessed with, who I've listened to almost exclusively this month, and instead my money went to Nickelback and God knows who else. Often, these heavy listeners aren't even individuals. They're offices and yoga studios and restaurants who have music in the background 24-7. They pay the same $10 subscription fee as everyone else, but because they're such heavy listeners, they dictate in a very real way how the money gets divvied up. I don't wanna be paying the artists that some restaurant puts on their playlist. I want my money Money to go to the artists that I listen to. Well, guess what? There's a way to do that. In his multiple Medium posts, Sharky calls it the subscriber share model. It's dead simple. Spotify should just divide up my $7 based on who specifically I listen to that month. So if I listen to Eve Barzilay 100% of the time in a given month, he gets my whole $7. If I listen to, say, the Spinto Band 25% of the time, they'll get $1.75. Compare that to the big pool of money system. If I listen to 200 tracks in a month and 50 of those streams are the Spinto Band, based on the per stream royalty rate, they stand to make only 35 cents. So the subscriber share model is a fantastic idea. As Sharky says in his Medium post, it honors the intent of the listener and incentivizes getting more fans, bringing the goals of everyone, services, labels, artists, and fans into alignment. Now Spotify isn't likely to do this anytime soon, but Sharky has come up with an answer for that too. He's come up with an idea for a protest he's calling Silent September. Normally, it'd be impossible for a typical listener to keep up with the heavies, the businesses that keep the music pumped all day. So the idea for the protest is this. For the month of September, turn down your volume and keep your streaming service of choice going 24-7 with a playlist of indie artists you love on repeat. Streaming services can't tell when you have your volume down, and if you have a big playlist of artists on repeat, 
it won't raise any alarm bells. There's nothing they can do to stop you. If you're a typical listener and you do this even for just a day, it will double your monthly listening. Doing it for a week will result in more streams than a typical listener does in a year. If enough of us do this and we focus on the indie artists we love, the major labels will start to worry about their piece of the big pool of money pie decreasing. That's when they'll really take notice and see for themselves just how unfair the current system for distributing royalties is. I made a playlist I'm sharing for both Spotify and Apple Music of the artists I'm gonna be streaming for the month of September, and I hope you'll do the same. Let's make this happen, people.